Hey everybody, it's Alex from Heavy New York. We are at the Empire State Tattoo Convention 2018 and today we are here with the one and only Paul Booth. Thank you for your time. How you doing, man? Yeah. It's so good to have you here, man. Um, you know, this is what you've been doing this for 30 years now, I'd imagine. You know, I look forward to this every year, but <laughs> you know what to expect every year, right? Yeah, uh, you know, I've been 30 years tattooing and 28 of those traveling the world and <laughs> doing this. So, you know, I kind of... Uh, I guess I'm used to it. Yeah, you know. pretty much. Um, but, you know, it's so great to talk to you because, you know, I've interviewed a lot of musicians, but I'm also a visual artist. So, But what I really like is you are an artist who, you know, you're obviously known in the world of tattooing and the regular art world as well as in the world of music, you know, doing the music video for Psychosis by Cavalera Conspiracy. Do you? It's beautiful that you are in all these worlds that creative fields. Depending on what if it's something with music or with art or whatever, is there a different creative mind frame that you're in? No, actually, um, somewhere beneath the mind frame. I don't know how to explain it, really. Well, I'll give it a shot. Um, I work in multiple disciplines. You know, I tattoo, I paint, I sculpt, uh, I try and make music, uh, 3D design, all different artistic mediums, you know. And... Uh, doing that for a while and I do it for a number of reasons but one of the things I discovered is that uh, it kind of puts me in this vantage point that I was never in before because each medium is sort of like a, a coordinate or a trajectory you know a point of view perhaps and uh, working in all these different mediums the the tools change but the core of the creative energy that produces the art remains the same so I can go from tattooing for an hour to painting for a half hour making music for an hour tattooing another hour working on you know design stuff and but it's the same I'm in this place that's like at the root of it all you know where my creative juices kind of originate so I I've now I, I'm much more successful at kind of turning the creativity on and off like a light switch when I need it it's there you know and and uh, I see my art from different perspectives because of uh, this way I operate you know and being that you see them from different perspectives I mean I've always thought that inspiration was kind of like a double-edged sword in a way and it's kind of like the most overused word in the in the world of art but in terms of an idea that you have with your art do you have like an external or an internal experience in order to create uh every project whether painting or even a tattoo but uh they're all emotional roller coasters you know as an artist you go through all these emotions during the process of creation that uh like a painting for example you know you start out you're all excited uh you experiment, you know, you, you fuck something up, you panic, you get insecure, you think you're a loser, you're done forever, you quit painting, you, oh wow, this is starting to work out, oh, this is looking pretty cool, oh shit, you know, and it's just like this, you know, and, and, and you know, you, uh, you just go through all these intense emotions in your head while you're making the creation, and, and that's really, that journey is really the art, you know, that's where the art comes from, is the the uh, struggles you put into the visuals or, or the work, whatever it is. Yeah. Of course. And, you know, it's really interesting that all these different ideas can come. What I'm curious is every artist evolves and every artist moves forward. And being that you work in these creative fields, are I know they come from a similar core, but has one ever helped you evolve in another way? Uh, they Oh, it's a balance. They all encourage each other. I use painting techniques in my tattooing. I even use tattooing techniques in my paintings, you know. Um, uh, because of this vantage point I speak of, you know, I can look at my tattooing and say, you know, I can see the brush stroke like I would in a painting. Uh, you know, let me do an underpainting and build this up in layers like glazing and oil painting, uh, but rather it's ink on skin, you know. Uh, so, yeah, they, they, they rely on each other at this point. It's so like a support group. <laughs> That's actually some artists like to keep it separate to yeah, say, yeah. but it's interesting now whenever you are working on a piece of art do you have a preconceived idea of what you would like to do or has there ever been any improvising involved that and you kind of let things take its form it's actually both um, I have a finished product in my head when I begin 
and I ignore it through the course of it. Um, that's about it, really, you know. I don't stick to a plan. I don't do homework. I just let it happen organically in the moment, you know. So, like, I sit down with my client for a tattoo and get to know them a little bit, ask them some questions, get in their head, find out what they like, what they don't like. Because, you know, they're giving me, like, all this artistic freedom to do what I want on them. But I don't want to just do what I want. I want to figure out what's right for them, you know. So the, the consultation becomes like a therapy session, you know, and we talk out things and uh, uh, I get to the root of what they're really looking for or what they're ready to wear for the rest of their life. And as I to get there, I get visuals and I imagine and visualize and, and uh, the image is done, you know. Now I just have to execute it. Now that I'm ready to execute it, I just ignore what I just invented and see where it goes, you know. I mean, I base it loosely on the plan, but I never uh, stick to the plan because it's the evolution of the concept and, and the, the mutation of it that, that is the fun part, really. Of course. And sometimes, you know, you have like an idea that you evolve around and you could be disappointed. Now, obviously, I could see a concept whenever I look at your work because there's something I feel, and but also the composition is remarkable for you do you have to does a composition rely on a concept sometimes or have you ever developed a concept as you were creating uh, I can approach it both ways really um, I like to work well with tattooing in particular I like to work with the musculature I think it's important to develop uh, a, a symbiotic relationship between the art and the flesh the canvas um, for a tattoo, you know, I think what really separates the men from the boys, I should say for me in tattooing is how the tattoo fits the, the body, how it moves with the body, how it, it uh, works and relies on the shapes on the body, you know, the shapes of the muscles, the veins bulging out, whatever it may be. Uh, incorporating the art into that form is what homogenizes the two and like when you move the tattoo moves you know the flow of the composition and the design is built on the shape of the body um, and uh, that's when it becomes so organic and like it's always meant to be there you know because it's like a part of you now so well it's very interesting and I'd imagine because you know Art is one of those things, for me, I use it to get away from reality and get away from people. You know, you live in New York, you want to... I used to need art for that. <laughs> now I need art to come back, actually. <laughs> but, you know... The acid trip you never got over, you know. <laughs> but being that you are tattooing and you're interacting with a human being and using your art to do so, that has got to... I don't want to say maybe creates a new love for the art, but you obviously approach your artwork differently based on how others perceive it in a way. Some artists say you shouldn't care about what people think, and I agree, but, you know, people obviously... Well, every tattooer, as far as I'm concerned, has an ethical responsibility to look out for their clients. In other words, like, you know, an 18, 19-year-old kid comes into my shop or whatever and wants me to tattoo his whole neck, and it's his first or second tattoo, you know? Um, if I just wanted his money and the Instagram photo when I'm done, I'd do the job. I'm not giving a shit about his welfare, you know. However, if I had ethics, I would be a couple of things. Like, one, I can't shake the feeling that you're making a mistake. And it's something I don't really want to be a part of or put my name on, you know. I have to, I don't want to be a part of someone's, like, something that I, I know they're going to regret or have a high potential of regretting, you know. And so for me, it's like I can't know somebody well enough in 10, 15 minutes in a short consultation to decide if I'm ready to be a part of this commitment that they're about to make, you know, because they were still, you know, I know face tattoos are trendy and all now, but, like, we still live in a society where if you're, like, 19 or 18 years old, you know, you might not get that cool job anymore or that career you were thinking about heaven or the career you didn't know you wanted yet yeah. you know so i just i don't want to i don't want to be responsible for that you know i'm let, you know so i just avoid it or and the final question i'd like to ask you is because for me as an artist this has always been the struggling question for me how do you know when a piece of art is done uh you know i used to have some really quick 
rapier wit answers for that. But um, I think uh, everyone has a battle with when it's done. But uh, I have reached a point where, like, it's more like an, a level of ex acceptability, you know. For me, it's never really done. For me, it's never really good enough. For me, it's, uh, it's the point where I could say that's the best I can do that. As far as it being done, it's the point where I can look at it and say, I just can't possibly paint that eyeball any better. I just don't know enough or I'm not good enough to take that to the next level. I accept that and the next eyeball hopefully will be better. This is the best I can make it. And, um, you know, and when I feel a confidence level of like, because there's a point where you keep turning the screw, you're going to strip it. And you got to know when to screw that down just tight enough so the screw doesn't strip loose, you know. Same in art, you know. You got to know when, you know, you can get it to the point of awesome, but you got to keep t twisting the screw and fuck with it a little more, and then you fuck up the whole thing and you're back to square one again. Absolutely. Every artist has been there, you know. Paul, I want to thank you so much for sure, your man. time. I can't tell you how many times I ripped you off in art school. <laughs> oh, no worries, man. <laughs> At least I'm being thought of in art school. That's good enough for me. Yeah, right? <laughs> but everybody, we are here with the one and only Paul Booth. Be sure to check out his work and be sure to get tattooed at Last Rites, even though you probably have like a 27-year waiting list or something like that. Yeah, it's long, but fortunately not that long. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Heavy New York, everybody.